In December of 2019, a new respiratory disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus started in China. This 2019 coronavirus disease, known as COVID-19, has since spread to almost every country across the world. The pandemic has affected all aspects of daily life, including work, travel, trade, tourism, food supplies, and financial markets. To reduce the impact of pandemics such as COVID-19 on businesses, workers, customers, and the public, it is vital to prepare and plan as far in advance as possible of potentially worsening outbreak conditions. The Occupational Health and Safety Administration has made recommendations to all companies in regard to this and other pandemics. Areas of concern include exposure risks, sources of exposure, and routes of transmission. Lack of continuity planning can result in a cascade of failures as employers attempt to address challenges of a pandemic. This, coupled with insufficient resources and with workers who might not be adequately trained for jobs they may have to perform under pandemic conditions. Pandemic planning is based on traditional infection prevention and industrial hygiene practices. Focusing on engineering, administrative, and work practice controls, and personal protective equipment use. Employers and employees should use this training guidance to help identify risks in workplace settings, determine any appropriate control measures to implement, and take the necessary steps to ensure a safe workplace for all. This training program will highlight the different areas of pandemic preparedness, including COVID-19 information, resources for current information, steps to reduce workplace exposure, identify and isolate sick employees or others at the workplace, implement workplace controls, following existing OSHA standards, classifying worker exposure to infectious diseases. The rapid spread of COVID-19 took most everyone by surprise. Information is still being sought and discovered about the virus to help understand how to protect against infection, treat positive cases, provide safe workplaces, and allow the economy to open back up. This is what is currently known about the virus. Symptoms of COVID-19 may appear 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus. Individuals with the following symptoms may have COVID-19. Cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fever, chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, new loss of taste or smell. The virus is thought to be spread mainly from person to person between people in close contact within six feet of one another. It also spreads through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. It may be possible to acquire the virus by touching a surface or object with the active virus on it and then touching your mouth, nose, or even eyes. But this is not considered to be the primary route of transmission. It is believed that people are most contagious when they are most symptomatic but some spread might be occurring when people are asymptomatic or not showing any symptoms. It is important to keep up to date with current conditions during a pandemic outbreak. New information about the virus, its transmission and impacts may require changes in how you operate at your workplace. Many companies and organizations have assigned individuals with the task of keeping the information current. The following organizations are valuable resources and should be utilized on a daily basis. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, referred to as the CDC. OSHA is another vital resource to use. When events such as a pandemic occur, OSHA can assist companies with the most up-to-date compliance rules and guidelines. Local and state governmental agencies such as Labor and Industrial Relations, Health Services, and Public Safety Departments are all possible resources to help.
One of the most important issues is to develop an infectious disease preparedness and response plan if your company does not already have one. Stay informed with guidance from federal, state, and local agencies and authorities and incorporate their recommendations into your workplace plan. Consider the level of risk associated with various work sites and job tasks performed and the controls necessary to address the risks. Things to consider include where, how, and to what sources could an employee be exposed and an employee's individual risk factors. Pandemic outbreaks can impact multiple areas at the same time and can often last for an extended time. Your company should prepare for such possibilities and all the situations which could occur, including an increase of worker absenteeism, an increase in demand for certain products, and a decrease in others, disruptions in the delivery and supply chain, shipments to and from areas severely affected might be delayed, not shipped complete, or others possibly canceled. Your area of the country might be at low risk, but one of your major suppliers may be in a high outbreak area. It may be a wise practice to seek alternate supply sources before any pandemic strikes. The need for social distancing, staggered work shifts, work from home requirements, downsizing operations, and other exposure reducing measures. And finally, your company may have to conduct essential operations with a reduced workforce and cross-train workers in order to continue operation. Prompt identification and isolation of sick employees or others in the workplace is vital in protecting all employees, customers, and visitors in the workplace. During this time period, visitors should be limited and only allowed if deemed essential. Employees are encouraged to self-monitor for signs and symptoms of an infectious disease if they suspect possible exposure. Employers should develop policies and procedures for employees to report when they are sick or experiencing symptoms. Encourage sick employees to stay home and not show up at the job site. If possible, immediately isolate anyone with signs or symptoms of an infectious disease. Isolate a room or area which can be closed off for isolation until medical help can arrive and restrict the number of people entering the isolation area. It is important to provide protection for any worker who has been in close proximity or prolonged contact with a sick person via engineering and administrative controls, safe work practices, and PPE. The best way to control hazards is to systematically remove them from the workplace. When it is not possible, then reducing exposure is required via engineering controls, administrative controls, safe work practices, and PPE. With infectious diseases, it is most likely a combination of all the control measures will be necessary. Engineering controls to consider include Installing high-efficiency HEPA air filters capable of trapping small particles and have a program where the filters are replaced on a regular basis. Increase the ventilation rates in the facility. Installing physical barriers like sneeze guards to protect workers. Using negative pressure ventilation in some areas when required. Administrative controls to consider include encouraging sick workers to stay home minimizing contact between employees, clients, customers, and visitors using virtual communications and telework if possible. Establish flexible work sites and flexible work schedules such as staggered shifts, alternate work days, or extra work shifts to increase physical distance between employees. Discontinue non-essential work travel to areas with outbreaks. Check for travel updates regularly. Make an emergency communications plan, including the means to communicate with employees to keep them informed of company's actions. Provide employees with up-to-date education and training on pandemic risk factors and protective actions. Monitor the CDC regularly. Train and retrain employees on appropriate PPE and how to properly put it on and take it off 
and how to use it correctly and proper storage techniques. Safe work practices to ensure the protection of employees during any outbreak will require an emphasis on basic infection prevention measures like good hygiene and infection control practices. The goal is to reduce the duration, frequency, or intensity of exposure to a hazard. Examples of safe work practices include providing resources and a work environment that promotes personal hygiene. For example, provide tissues, no-touch trash cans, hand soap, alcohol-based hand rubs containing at least 60% alcohol, disinfectants, and disposable towels for workers to clean their work surfaces. Require frequent and thorough hand washing or the use of alcohol-based hand rubs. Workers should always wash hands when they are visibly soiled and after removing any PPE. Post hand washing signs in all restrooms. Teach and encourage respiratory etiquette, such as covering coughs and sneezes with the bend of your arm or into a tissue. Avoid using other employees' phones, desks, offices, and other work equipment as much as possible. Establish routine housekeeping procedures to clean and disinfect all work areas, surfaces, equipment, and tools. Only use EPA-approved disinfectants and cleansers. Personal protective equipment is important in the fight to help eliminate the spread of infectious diseases. Correctly using PPE can help prevent some exposure, but it should not take the place of other preventative measures. Examples of PPE include gloves, goggles, face shields, masks, and respiratory protection. During an outbreak of an infectious disease such as COVID-19, the type of PPE used could change depending on many factors, such as location, updated risk assessments, and information on the effectiveness in preventing the spread of the disease. Check with OSHA and CDC websites regularly for current recommended updates. Employers are required to provide PPE for the employees. The type of PPE required during an infectious disease outbreak should be based on the risk of being infected while working and job tasks that may lead to exposure. PPE should be selected according to the hazards, properly fitted at all times, consistently and properly worn, regularly inspected, maintained, and replaced as needed, properly removed, cleaned, and stored or disposed of properly. Various OSHA standards may be applicable to the workplace during an outbreak. While no specific standard addresses infectious disease control, some OSHA regulations may apply to preventing occupational exposure to the disease. Those standards include OSHA's Personal Protective Equipment Standards, which require the use of gloves, eye and face protection, and respiratory protection. The General Duty Clause, which requires employers to furnish each worker employment and a place of employment, which are free from recognized hazards that are causing or are likely to cause death or serious physical harm. OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogens Regulation deals with occupational exposure to human blood and other potentially infectious materials. This law does not usually include respiratory secretions that might transmit diseases like COVID-19, but the guidelines of the regulation could help control some sources of the virus, including exposures to bodily fluids, such as respiratory secretions that generally are not covered by the standard. Worker risk of occupational exposure to respiratory infectious diseases during an outbreak may depend in part on the type of industry and the need for social distancing of six feet. To help employers determine appropriate precautions, OSHA has divided job tasks into four risk exposure levels. The occupation risk pyramid shows the four exposure risk levels in the shape of a pyramid to represent probable distribution of risk. OSHA believes most U.S. workers will likely fall into the lower exposure risk or medium exposure risk levels. The four classifications of risk are 
Very high exposure risk. Includes healthcare and morgue workers who perform aerosol generating procedures on or collecting and handling specimens from potentially infectious patients or bodies. High exposure risk. Includes healthcare delivery, healthcare support, medical transport, and mortuary workers exposed to known or suspected diseased patients or bodies. Medium exposure risk. Jobs that require frequent and close contact with people who may be infected but who are not known or suspected patients. Lower exposure risk. Jobs that do not require contact with people known to be or suspected of being infected. Workers in this category have minimal contact with the public and other co-workers. Federal, state, and local government agencies are the best sources for information in the event of an infectious disease outbreak. Staying informed about the latest developments and recommendations is vital as specific guidance may change based upon evolving situations. Constantly monitor OSHA and the CDC for developing situations. Employees' concerns about pay, time off, safety, health, and other issues can affect their work, attendance, and actions. Employers should keep employees informed of safety precautions being taken, provide training as needed, and communicate openly about the current situation of the workplace. And finally, always work safely while at your workplace by following all recommendations of your job, because safety is always part of your job.